So we want to psychoanalyze the new Joker movie. Hi, Noga. Hi, Dave. Hi, everybody. Hi. Noga, you're a therapist. Mm -hmm. You're a soon-to-be doctor. Yes. You finished your PhD. Submitted it. And you're here to psychoanalyze Joker, a.k.a. Arthur Fleck, a.k.a. Happy, Joaquin Phoenix in the, the Todd Phillips movie. Okay, so Arthur Fleck, what's wrong with him? We see that he has uh, some kind of a chronic depression, first of all, uh, which could be dysthemia, but he also has psychotic uh, symptoms, which could be narcissistic uh, disorder, okay. or narcissistic delusions, or uh, of uh, okay. grandiosity. He has this uh, tick, this uh, Tourette, semi-Tourette disease. That makes him laugh in inappropriate places. And he also ha is also weird, which could indicate some kind of a, it's not, a, yeah, I mean, it's a, it, it could indicate some kind of a personality disorder because personality disorders often, I mean, that's what, how we diagnose them, that they cause problems in uh, relationships and in work, and we okay. see that he has many problems like that. Right. But also uh, the weirdness, I mean, it's really one of the clusters of personality disorders. We have weird personality disorders, dramatic and uh, uh, anxious. So he is definitely weird. He's not way. dramatic and anxious? Uh, he is all of those. <laughs> <laughs> and afterwards we want to talk about maybe the stigmatization of, of, of mental illness. It was very important to you yeah, for, to it talk was very about. Important. But let's talk about that in the end. We're just talking about things. He is not a real person. Right. We can say whatever we want. Yes. It won't harm him. So, uh, so he's weird. <laughs> so he is weird. I mean, I mean, uh, people refer to him as a weirdo. I right. mean, they say that uh, many people feel uncomfortable around right. him. We as viewers feel uncomfortable around right. him. Before he does anything mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, like, we, coming in, we know that he's going to be a crazy person and uh, going to kill a lot of people and cause a lot of mayhem. So we yeah. coming, we're coming in with the baggage. But if you just watch the movie and you don't know anything until he shoots uh, those people on the train, mm -hmm. We don't have any good reason to dislike him mm -hmm. or to feel uncomfortable, but we do. Yeah, I just want to say that crazy is not a psychiatric uh, <laughs> diagnosis. <laughs> One of the symptoms that we talked about is laughter, which can be a Tourette-like syndrome uh, sy symptom, uh, is uh, making people feel uncomfortable because it's inappropriate. I mean, the, uh, and he knows it. And he knows it, and he knows it, and he gives out this kind of like uh, note that says what he has, and he says that it's uh, uncontrollable. Uh, it's yeah. not something that he can control, uh, which is supposed to make fe people feel more empathic towards yeah. him, but it doesn't. It just it's makes weird. yeah, because it's weird, so they just uh, stay away from him even more. Uh, so is it really Tourette? I mean, uh, uh, we don't know. But because he, uh, he stops doing it uh, after he kills his mom, goes uh, on the Robert De Niro show, mm -hmm. then it, does, it doesn't have that thing anymore. So it might be, I don't know, psychosomatic in some sense? Well, I mean, Freud would call it, and here we go to the psychodynamic uh, formulation of okay. things, he would call it a reaction formation. I mean, in psychiatry, it's called inappropriate affect. Okay. Like the affect is the external expression of the emotion, but sometimes we can feel very differently than what we express. And when it's inappropriate, like laughing in uh, inappropriate places, yeah. it's an inappropriate affect because oh, he's not okay. really happy. He's in right. distress and he's, he's laughing right. something that we relate to joy or, you know, good right. feelings. All I have are negative thoughts. You know, you're not wanted, you're unwelcome. Right. And it's not my fault. It's not my fault, and this it's is, so frustrating. It's very hard. It's very but Freud would call it the reaction <laughs> formation because he says that sometimes when we can't handle difficult uh, feelings or thoughts or emotions, we display the exact opposite of them. Like laughing when you're in distress and when you're sad. I mean, it's, uh, you can't really recognize this kind of sadness. And with Happy, we also know it was his mother's wish, in a way, for him to be happy all the time. She kept repeating the fact that he was such a happy boy. And it's as if he couldn't really display right. his sadness and, and his very, distress. Very sad. And he was very, very sad. He was uh, tied uh, to the radiator. Yeah, and he was abused by her boyfriend and he was neglected by her. But it's as if to gain his mother's love, he needed to be happy. So uh, he learned that to, uh, put, a mask to on. put a mask on, yeah. Uh, and to show happiness when he's not really happy. And uh, we can see the same kind of uh, inappropriate affect. Uh, when he uh, uh, grows up and he starts displaying it also in public. It's as if, if you want to gain the public's love, you have to show 
that you're happy. What's so funny? Just freak! <laughs> and the farther uh, the happiness that you, that you display is from how you really feel, this is a recipe for, for disaster. It's not like a minor sadness and you try and put a good face on just whatever because friends are coming over for dinner. Mm -hmm. You are destroyed from the inside and you paint yourself a mask of happiness mm -hmm. and you have to perform, yeah. actually performing, not performing yeah. with quotation marks. Yeah, but it's uh, with him, it's, it always feels foreign, like it feels fake. It's not as if, I mean, we know that stand-up comedians, right, we have this whole idea of like the sad clown and many stand-up comedians, uh, when they talk about their personal lives and a lot of hardship, yeah. a lot of depression yeah. and this and that. So I feel like a failure all the time. Um, I knew that I was gaining weight because my belt stopped fitting around my neck the same way that it used to. Uh-oh, what are we doing, huh? Uh-oh. I mean, it looks like something, a part of their personality, which, which uh, has like this humorous view on things and people relate to that. But with him, it never feels like it's a part of, it's integrated in his personality. Right. It's like a fake self right. that he had to put on, but it always feels fake to also, others. So you mentioned stand-up comedian, so he, so he wants to be a stand-up comedian. When I was a little boy and told people I was going to be a comedian, everyone laughed at me. Well, no one's laughing now. You can say that again, pal. It's as if he doesn't have the tools to know what's appropriate in society or not, because okay. he never had also, I mean, healthy figures to show him like a healthy aspect of uh, reality judgment. Mm. Uh, there was never someone there that was stable enough or, uh, you know, he, the his, opposite. Mo he, yeah. his mother was uh, hospitalized yeah. and she's delusional. Yeah, yeah, they have a very Oedipal relationship. He gives her a bath, he sees her naked. Okay, so why do I say that he has narcissistic features? I mean, we see him as someone who is very, you know, Low self-esteem. Low self-esteem, right, which is also part of the vertical split, what Kohot called it. He said that most uh, people with narcissistic, uh, with pathological narcissism, they have this kind of split between a very low self-image, but also a very grandiose yeah. self that is displayed. Yeah, unrealistic. Unrealistic. We see that he has narcissistic fantasies, for example, in the fantasy when he's on the Maury uh, Franklin show. The De Niro right? show. Yeah. The De Niro show. <laughs> in that fantasy, it's really interesting because he's actually displaying the fantasy of being loved by an admired parent, right? I mean, right. he admires him. Right. And in the show, like in, his, in the fantasy when he's uh -huh. in the show, uh, Franklin sees the good parts in him, right? And he says, I wish I had a kid like right. you. So it's like he, he comes in, uh, uh, rela like in contact with the fantasy of having this very admired parent yeah. who also loves him yeah. and wants him as his kid. It's very childish. It's, it's very childish, but it's also very natural. I mean, it's okay. I mean, this is like, the good narcissistic part, okay. for example, okay. is for us to want to be loved by admired people. You know, we want to someone yeah. to love yeah, us. Yeah, but he goes over the edge like, I would give all of my career up just to have a kid like you yeah. whom I just met uh, exactly. a minute ago. So a And also, delusional. it's a very public display of affection. It's like getting, uh, you know, uh, getting recognition from someone very publicly right. and also getting the love of the audience. Yes. So and that's and like it's that. It's on TV. It's everybody's going to watch everybody's it. Everybody's going to watch it. Everybody's going to see mm. that this person yes. chooses him as his kid. And right. so that's the grandiose self. It's like okay. th there's a very, I mean, gentle, tender, loving wish, but it's, it looks like very grandiose. Yes. And also, unconnected to reality in the mm -hmm. way that what he says about himself in his own fantasy is not that he accomplished something great, just that he's a good boy yeah. to his mommy and he thinks that this would make everybody swoon and say, wow, this is an incredible person. I can't believe mm -hmm. that you're a good boy to your mom. I mean, that's the sad part of it because also his mother was the only one, I mean, even though she was very ill herself, but she was the only one who recognized the good parts in him. Right, she even writes uh, in the letter, he's a good boy, uh, you know. To her, he is a good boy. I mean, he does take care of her. Right. But other people don't see the good parts in him, right? We talked about it, that even on the train, when he does make that kid laugh, the kid's mother turns to him and says, Please stop bothering my kid. 
he, he really did something nice to that yeah. kid at that moment. I did that stuff uh, on the bus and I would have been, uh, if, if I would have been shamed uh, like this, that would have been, that would have ruined my day. Exactly, because you wanted, you try to do something nice and uh, people... Uh, yeah, see the worst see the possible worst in you. Exactly. You're like what a predator, a child predator. Exactly. And so no one there to see the good parts in him. Right. So he has to resort to those kinds of... Uh, right. He doesn't, have any, he doesn't have any, any foundations that he can say to himself, okay, this woman is a bit paranoid. No, yeah, it's yeah. just like it, it, uh, yeah. it cuts really close to home. Yeah, yeah, because that's the kind of treatment he gets uh, from everyone in his surrounding. I mean, uh, being happy is like his false self. And he, uh, he feels like that's the only way to get the public's attention. So being a stand-up comedian is really just taking that false self and putting it, like, you know, magnifying it uh, yes. a thousand times more. And then he magnifies that a million times more and becomes the joker. People admire him for something that he is not. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to start a revolution. He didn't want to start anything. He said, I'm not political. I just, uh, I did it. People like it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep playing this part that wasn't me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When he killed them, he wasn't joker. Yeah. He was just a scared person who was being beaten and had a way to defend himself. And out of uh, these circumstances, which, which we can all understand, shot the first two people. Yeah, yeah. We do see that he also suffers and, uh, from symptoms of derealization. I mean, he says, I never felt like a real person, right? Okay. I never felt I existed. The dissociation from trauma, we know he's been very traumatized. Mm -hmm. It could also be part of depression and also be part of uh, schizophrenia. But uh, uh, we, we see that he's uh, deteriorating not only when he becomes, I mean, uh, criminally right. violent yeah. and like uh, criminally insane, as a, uh, but uh, also uh, uh, when he starts relating to things as if they're a comedy, right? Like he, his derealization, like this is not real. I mean, this is all just like a comedy. I used to think that my life was a tragedy. Now I realize it's a comedy. Uh, I'm shooting those people, but and you know things yeah. are happening, but it's not yeah. reality. Yeah. So that's like the psychotic. Uh, th he loses the inhibitions. He loses the inhibitions. We also know that at that point of the movie, he stopped taking his medications. Also, he doesn't have uh, uh, support of any kind. He's, he killed his mother. That's it. He's that's it. Yeah. He doesn't have any. Nothing any connection to to the world anymore uh, yeah. there's nothing left to lose yeah it's like a balloon and you just like uh, cut the string and whatever yeah there it goes yeah yeah so uh it's he's really losing touch with reality and uh and, and yeah and why is he turning violent just because that was the first time that he felt agency and then he said okay i this worked mm -hmm. people like it you watch the movie, we talked about it, it makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable with uh, maybe the way that uh, mental illness was portrayed in the movie. Yeah, uh, there is this uh, term uh, that Kohat uh, uh, termed called the na narcissistic rage. I mean, he experiences, not only did he experience severe trauma as a child, he also experienced micro traumas every day, uh, many times a day. Right. I mean, uh, like the, the example on the train, that's like a micro trauma. Yeah. But also, of course, he had many, like he was beaten, he was abused yeah. uh, by many ways, uh, in many ways. The narcissistic rage is uh, like the, the psyche's way of defending its wholeness in a way. Not that he, he's very fragmented, I mean, but, but just the fact that he can't take it anymore. It, it's like he's trying to show, here, I exist, right. I'm, not, right. I'm not willing to I take matter. it. I matter, exactly. Think about the person that never felt like he had an impact on reality and then suddenly he kills people. Yeah, and it's and, on the news and, it's on the news and, and uh, Mr. Wayne Sr. talks about it, about something that you did mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it started the movement. The, he turned the, the tragedy into ideology and uh, things went from there in very... <laughs> Ironically, being ignored is more dangerous to your psyche and to your well-being than being abused. Okay. I mean, uh, we talked about uh, the unfortunate experiment uh, that happened. I mean, we uh, talked about it, but, talk, but, but yeah, they don't know. They talk oh, about. you weren't there. We were sitting <laughs> in the cafe. We were talking about, uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, there was an experiment after uh, World War II uh, when uh, they took uh, like uh, babies who were orphans. Who, who is they? 
Uh, I think it was René Spitz that uh, did the experiment, but I'm not... Uh, uh, Who is that person? Uh, from which country? I want from to... England, from okay. England. Okay. So yeah. the English, the British? No, no, don't. Please don't. Uh, <laughs> don't blame groups. The experiment was to, uh, to treat the babies, to give them food, to, give the, you know, to change them, to change their clothes, okay. to bathe them, but oh. with a still face and uh, without uh, showing them any affection, right. without having one particular figure to do it. I mean, the, they the, did it to babies. They did it to babies to see Just what to happens. See what happens. Oh, and and awesome. many of them died or had like uh, severe developmental uh, disorders. And uh, it was really ho horrible. I mean, it was before the ethics committees. Uh, I mean, now that will never happen. <laughs> anyway, we know that uh, people who are transparent, that we don't treat them, we don't give them any kind of treatment, they're in much more danger, I mean, with their health and everything, than people who are abused, unfortunately. Right. And we yeah. know that children that don't get enough attention from their parents, oftentimes they go to extreme uh, lengths to, to get their attention, be it uh, positive or negative attention. Yeah, exactly. So wanting to get negative attention in that sense is like another call for life, you know? It's like... Uh, you want to live, you want to get attention, you're willing to do it in a, an abusive way than to uh, yeah. n not do it at all. Like Joker. And, yeah, like Joker, yeah. I mean, because like you said, the silence treatment or indifference is much more hurtful than yeah. uh, being yelled at or, you know, in many ways of I it. Mean, yeah, and now he's happy now, at the end. Yeah, he's happy at the end because he also got the public's admiration and yeah. attention. I mean, his grandiose... Uh, uh, fantasies were fulfilled in a way. This is like Hitler. It's like Hitler had these grandiose fantasies and mm -hmm. then they were realized. So of course he's going to go all mental. But yeah, I mean, uh, one of the dangers, I guess, is that people will be afraid of the mentally ill, right? Because they think that everyone who's mentally ill is capable of doing these things, which is of course not true because most people who are mentally ill are, you know, yeah. non-violent like most people in general are. Yeah. And there are people who are violent who are not mentally ill. And yeah. We shouldn't be afraid of it, uh, like the movie, you know, suggests yeah. in a way. I mean, even, you know, if they don't mean it, because it's more like a social criticism. Okay, so Noga, thank you. So if you want to catch all our Joker videos and all our videos in general, be sure to hit the subscribe button and share it to your friends uh, on the social media, whatever, let them know. In our next video, we're going to psychoanalyze society and how it treats the mentally ill. In the third one in the podcast, the Got Academy podcast, we're going to psychoanalyze the mob, the crowd in the movie. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye